In this episode of Micromatic, we're gonna go from this to this before you even hit the shutter button. So today I wanted to talk to you about this little guy and things like this. This is a polarizing filter. And what it is, is it's a piece of glass that screws into the front of your lens. Now, before I get too deep into exactly what it is and how it works, I wanna give you a couple of scenarios in which case you might want to use a polarizing filter. Um, I have a polarizing filter in my bag at all times. Um, it's very, very useful in certain scenarios. So photography, it's about capturing light, right? Uh, a lot of times, however, when you're outside and it's a bright day, you don't have a whole lot of control over the light. That's one thing that's really cool about a polarizing filter is that it gives you an added bit of control over the light, even though your environment, you've got a bright sun in the sky and there's nothing you're gonna do about that. Uh, this little polarizer is gonna help you out. So let's say the scenario is you're shooting a picture of a red house uh, against the, a clear sky, okay? Um, that clear sky is gonna be kind of bright. There's a lot of light there and maybe there's a lot of light in your house too, but you might find uh, that the sky ends up being totally washed out in your photograph, right? You might get the exposure correct for the house. The house looks red, that looks the color you want, but that blue sky might not look so blue in your photograph. It might look a little bit gray, a little bit white, or even just kind of like a washed out blue. A uh, polarizer is really cool in this situation in that it will take uh, a washed out sky and it'll take, it'll bring it down to a dark blue. Uh, it's kind of magic. Uh, you'll see in these little demo videos exactly how the effect looks. Let's say you are in another bright daylight situation and you're taking a picture of something green. Let's say trees, right? They've got leaves uh, and maybe these leaves are a little bit glossy. You might find in your photographs that those glossy leaves are actually reflecting a lot of just bright white light at your lens. Uh, and that's not what you want. You want the green to show through, but you're just getting that kind of glary white light. Uh, this is another situation where the polarizer is really gonna help you out quite a bit. Screw in the polarizer, dial in the effect, and what you're gonna see is that you know, that white, that bright white light gets cut out and the green is gonna come popping from the lead. Um, another scenario, and this is, if you're a fisherman or a fisherwoman, you might be familiar with this. This is the same effect you're gonna get with polarized sunglasses. Uh, a polarizer can help you cut through the glare of things like water. Let's say you're on a lake and you see a fish down in the water and you point your camera at it, you might just end up with you know, you're seeing, you're just taking a photograph of the surface of the water because there's so much glare, there's so much light, that you're not gonna see what's below it. The polarizing filter can actually help you cut out that glare entirely so that you're seeing through the glare. You're seeing the light that's coming up from underneath of it. Maybe that's reflecting off of a fish or a tadpole or even like a cool underwater plant or something like that. Um, again, that's another really cool scenario where polarizers are useful. Um, a similar situation, let's say you are shooting through a window um, you're maybe doing street photography and you want to take pictures of someone sitting in a cafe, but you know, you pull up your camera, there's glare coming off the window. You don't really see the person. You might be SOL, but if you've got a polarizing filter, you can actually dial in the effect, cut the glare up from off of the glass and end up with the photograph that you want. So now you know a couple of situations in which case you might want to have a polarizing filter. I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about how this works because, well, I found it pretty interesting and it actually helped me to use the polarizing filter to better effect. First, you need to understand how light works and this is going to be the layman's version uh, because, well, I probably am going to get it wrong anyway. Uh, but this is how I understand it, right? This is how light works, right? You might think that light bounces off of something. Let's say about light bounces off my forehead and into your eyes or into your camera lens, right? Uh, you might think of it as a straight shot and kind of light travels that way, uh, but light actually travels in waves. So the light isn't just a, a direct line beam uh, from your subject into your camera lens, it's actually a wave. So it's, you know, it's moving up and down or left and right. And the direction of this wave is what we call the polarity of the light. So a, a light beam that reflects off a leaf might have a, a horizontal polarity, whereas the light that reflects off the sky might have a vertical polarity. Uh, and this is where the polarizing filter helps you out quite a bit. Let's imagine that this polarizer has a bunch of vertical bars, kind of like a GL cell, all right? And let's say that the light coming from the sky is traveling with a horizontal polarity, so it's moving left and right. The, the, the jail cell bars of your polarizer 
basically they're going the opposite direction of this polarized light and so they're actually going to block out that light and that's how the polarizer works and so then if i were to take those gel cell bars and rotate them you know horizontal now it's going to allow that light to come through and then any light that was traveling at a different polarity is going to end up getting blocked out um, that's kind of the gist of how a polarizer works and just understanding that different things that you're different subjects that you're photographing different surfaces in your photograph are going to have are going to be reflecting light with different polarities and so that's where that's why a polarizer can help you out now if you are shopping for a polarizer there are a few things you need to keep in mind the first and most obvious decision is you're going to have to find a polarizer that's the right size for your lens uh, this for example is a 58 millimeter polarizing filter which means that i put it on my 75 millimeter lens Wait a minute, 58, 70, that doesn't make any sense. Here's the thing, here's the thing, okay. 75 millimeters describes the focal length. It, that doesn't matter. What does matter is this other number that you'll see here is the filter size. And this is, you'll see this printed on the inside of most lenses. In this case, it's a 58 millimeter filter size. Here I've got a 58 millimeter filter. And look at this, magically, as long as I've got them pointed the correct direction, they screw together. Here's a 46 millimeter polarizing filter. Again, my 58 millimeter filter thread, filter thread size lens, uh, it's, it's too small. It doesn't cover it up. That's not gonna do me any good. Similarly, let's say we've got this lens, right? It's got a 37 millimeter filter thread. Uh, this again is our 58 millimeter polarizer. It is, it's a little too big. It's a little too big, you know? It's not gonna screw in. However, uh, there is a little trick you can use. You can find these things, we call them step down filters and what this does is it's got uh, a 58 millimeter thread on the outside and it's got a 37 millimeter thread on the inside so i can screw that in like that now i can take my 58 millimeter thread filter and now i've got it on there it may look a little goofy it's a little big but it it does the job um, alternatively you can just buy a different i could buy a 37 millimeter uh, filter for that. Now the other big difference in polarizers that you're going to notice is that some are called linear polarizers and some are called circular polarizers. If you're shooting a mirrorless camera the difference doesn't actually matter. You can use either linear or circular polarizers. Uh, if you're shooting an SLR like a DSLR, Canon, Rebel, whatever, um, you're probably going to want to stick with circular polarizers and that just has to do with the way that the light comes through the filter and then interacts with the mirror box in your camera again if you're shooting mirrorless cameras you don't have a mirror box so it doesn't matter really you can use linear or circular uh, but if you are shooting slr i recommend sticking with the circular polarizers the good thing about the the mirrorless situation is that linear polarizers tend to be cheaper than circular polarizers so it's a good way to save some money um, one area where you might not necessarily want to skimp on saving money is on the lens coatings or the, the filter coatings. So this is again another differentiation between different types of filters where you get to make a decision. Some of the more expensive filters, like this one's actually a fairly pricey one, uh, they're going to have coatings on the outside. And basically what these coatings do is they just help reduce ghosting and flare in your photographs, right? Like your modern digital lenses are gonna have these coatings built into them, which is great. This is what keeps modern lenses performing very well. So even if you've got a nice lens with really nice coatings on the outside, if you take a filter that doesn't have those coatings and you put it on the front of it, then you might incur some of the negative effects of having glass without the coatings. Um, and so th those coatings can actually bring the prices of filters up quite a bit. You know, with filters, you can go anywhere from as cheap as a $5 filter up to, let's say a $200 filter. Um, personally, I kind of fall somewhere in between. I like to get a filter that is, you know, from a reputable company. I like Hoya. Uh, this is a B&W, which tends to be a little bit more expensive. Um, I've got a couple of Hoya filters as well. Uh, I tend to pay, you know, let's say like 30 or 40 bucks for filters, pretty decent price. Uh, you're going to end up with a decent quality filter. It might not be quite as nice as a $200 filter, but uh, I can live with it. And then one other thing to maybe keep in mind is that there are some polarizers that are labeled slim polarizers versus just regular polarizers. And in fact, this is a slim polarizer. This is the first one I bought. 
uh, and I was, you know, I'm really into micro four thirds cameras. I like everything small, slim sounds better. However, in this case, I might've made a mistake. I wish I had not gotten the slim one. Uh, you know, it's maybe a little bit slimmer than a typical polarizer, but there's a bit of a sacrifice here in that is that it's this lens or this filter doesn't have its own threads on the inside. Usually when you screw a filter in, you basically get another set of another filter thread. Uh, you could screw filters onto each other uh, indefinitely and maybe that's not super useful, but here's what's useful. Uh, this doesn't have the threads. Here's my lens cap. Uh, the lens cap doesn't fit the lens anymore. That's actually a big bummer. So now the filter itself, it came with this crappy push on lens cap. So I guess I can walk around and be not totally unprotected, but it falls off all the time. It drives me nuts. I wish I could undo that decision. In my opinion, slim filters, not, not worth it. So that's it. Now you know basically everything that I know about polarizers. Uh, I think it's a really, really useful tool to have in your camera bag at all times. Uh, at least have you know a polarizer for one of your lenses that you like using outdoors. Um, not super useful indoors if you're doing a lot of indoor photography. Maybe you don't need one, but if you're be you're outside all the time, um, you know I did a recent trip down to Big Sur, and having the polarizer was basically the difference between having a bunch of just kind of blah photos, and I ended up with some kind of decent photos. Um, thank you for the polarizer. Uh, a, a shout out to Bob Atkins at bobatkins.com. Um, there's just an article I found on the internet that actually taught me a lot about the difference between linear and circular polarizers. So I'm sharing that knowledge with you. Shout outs to Bob. If you've learned something from this video, and I sure hope you did, uh, go ahead and hit the like button down below. You can subscribe to the channel for more video content like this. And I'll see you in the next episode of Micromatic.